If you get to yo, what's up guys? What is going on? Welcome back. Hope y'all are doing well. Arsenal versus Manchester United preseason friendly. These are just preseason friendly games and uh, like a lot of people have been saying, they don't matter. I I kind of beg to differ. Um, the same thing was being said, uh, well a Chelsea YouTuber was saying that and uh, we saw what happened. Um, Chelsea got obliterated by Celtic and I saw the first half of that game and uh, damn. I mean, Celtic were getting in from everywhere. No matter how backed up, no matter how cluttered and tightened up in that box uh, they were getting, they were still getting through. Celtic were still getting through. Um, I And I knew it was going to end up with a Celtic win. Uh, and I wasn't surprised with a 4-1 either. I, w I was actually surprised that Chelsea actually scored uh, a goal. Um, and yes, a lot of these players, a lot of the starters are not, uh, they're not playing the same thing with Arsenal and Manchester United. They're missing a whole bunch of players. But uh, this is a preseason friendly, and you should still see these players playing, you know, with ease, with joy, and, and, and lighting up, just lighting up, just having fun. I get that people have to be careful, P players, you know, have to be careful, and they don't want to, you don't want to get injured right before, you know, what, two, three weeks away from starting the season? You don't want to get, uh, you don't want to get hurt. I get that. I, I, I understand, but, but still, and the ground, too, because they're playing on top of turf, grass that's put on, on top of turf, so... You know, it's different. A lot of these uh, places, they don't have the sprinklers uh, and they have to get hoses. And uh, I don't think they do a really good job when it comes to that. So they're not used to playing in these kind of pitches, these kind of fields. I, I get that. OK, fine. But um, I think at some point, you know, like that, that sounds like a lot of just uh, pretext and excuses from the players uh, because you should stand out. And I, I don't know about the Chelsea match, but in this game, I didn't see anyone stand out except Hoyland in the beginning and Hoyland ended up I don't know nicking himself uh, somewhere with his I think his ankle maybe and it didn't seem like it was that bad because you saw him walking walking away uh, with one of the assistants and he seemed he seemed fine he seemed fine it just seemed like something that they were trying to prevent just a preventative measure um, but Yoro on the other hand Yoro yeah that the grimace on his face uh, I mean that kind of said it all it seemed like he really hurt himself so hopefully it's not it's not too bad um, and when they take a look at it, you know, it could, uh, it could heal. I mean, he's still young, obviously. And, uh, you know, two, three weeks away, uh, obviously he's not going to be able to play. I don't think we're going to see him in any of the preseason friendlies. Hopefully uh, he's, he's ready for the start of the season because it's, I mean, looking at this United squad, I am concerned. If I was a Man Manchester United fan, I'd be very, very worried. I'd be very worried. You're starting off, I mean, you're playing with the same people. The only signing, signings that you guys made was the guy from Bologna. Xerxes or something like that and Euro and that's it nobody in the middle nobody in the front to accompany Hoyland and like I said Hoyland was man of the match for me honestly because you know he uh, he just looked sharp he just he looked really good and again this doesn't tell you anything this is not the all be end all you can have a really good season preseason pre friendly uh, start of the season and nothing happens right I mean you could uh you could run a blaze you could be doing Travella's uh, rainbow flicks right Rabona's uh, and everybody knows you're not going to be able to, you're not going to be doing that, or you're not going to get away doing that kind of stuff in the regular season in the EPL. But um, there's still something to be said about that, you know, playing these games. You know, one, the integrity of the club. You know, you have to hoist up that flag, and you know yourself as well, right? Like, why wouldn't you play more relaxed? You know, you're in the U.S., like beautiful weather in California. You know, I know not all the the games are play, being played over there, but still, um, people should play well. I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't get that. I remember back in the day, the few games that I caught back in the 2000s, I mean, they put on a show. The people that were, or maybe that's the thing. There is no uh, showboat, man. There is no showman. There is no one-trick pony. There's no ponies anymore. Like, there, there's no ponies. Manchester United fans, like, you got, what do you have? And you still have them. I completely forgot about Manchester United and, and, their, and their woes. You got Casemiro. Casemiro needs to he needs to leave he needs to go back to Brazil and just uh, retire there just just have fun I don't think he's anywhere near ready to be playing European uh, competitive football I think that's just behind him those years are, are, are behind him and he's he's won it all except I think a World Cup he's pretty much won it all so he needs to he, he, sh he should have been gone I still can't believe that he's he's there he's still playing at Manchester United you have uh, Ericsson, another one just you know why is Ericsson there yeah he's a good he's a good footballer those passes right but no, for Manchester United, you need someone, youth. You need someone like Pogba was at Juventus. McTominay, another one, uh, just limited. Mason Mount. Mason Mount actually played really well, maybe. 
maybe you know if you give him minutes because last season he he hardly played at all maybe you could get something out of him you know he's still relatively young and in this game he did fairly well he did you know he, he did pretty good and of course oh my god when i saw him i was like i completely forgot about him i was like oh my god this guy's still here anthony what is anthony doing what is he doing at manchester united why isn't he back in at ix or something i'm gonna say something and I said it before, I think because ever since they took away his ability to do that spin move, he's just been heartbroken. He's not the same player. He just isn't the same player. It's, it's, what did he do when he came in? He tried to do that in-swinger, that typical in-swinger that he cuts into his left and always tries to end for that upper 90, right? The, the second post. At least hit the target. At least hit the target. He couldn't even do that. And after that, I, I think he kind of failed um, his, uh, his right back. Uh, you know, because Martinelli with the goal, that goal was also just, uh, it was just a crappy goal. I mean, a goal's a goal. It won them the game. But Fish, Fish and hesitating, should I come out? Should I not come out? And um, it was just a weird kick. It was like a scoff kick. Uh, didn't hit it full contact. Anthony left the, the kid all by himself, you know, especially someone that's not a starter. And with the experience that Martinelli has, you know, you know what he's going to do. But still, he should have gone back and, and helped them out. So Anthony should not be there should not be there like why why haven't manchester united bought anybody like in the middle some somebody to replace anthony why is anthony there i don't think did he even get called up no he didn't i don't think he got called up to the national team to the brazilian national team i mean with the season he had i'd be shocked if he if he would have been called up so anthony needs to he needs to leave my god i can't believe he's still there i just can't believe he's still there so i am pretty concerned and now look the reason why maybe or maybe they are you know arsenal fans are probably saying like yo we you know we, we kind of didn't look good odegaard you know trossard you know that miss even though that was a really good save from onana Havertz, of course you still have Havertz. gabriel jesus uh, i'm kind of getting i'm getting a little bit um yeah my my patience is wearing off when <laughs> with gabriel jesus yeah he got that goal but that was a m mistake by amas that that could happen to epl but shouldn't happen a guy will lose his job if if he makes that simple mistake uh, I want to kind of blame Maguire because he should be kind of instructing him, helping him out. You know, he's a young kid. The kid was in back of him, so there's not much he, he could have done there. He got a goal. Gabriel Jesus did get a goal, but he's been kind of underperforming. Uh, so it could be, could be that, you know, they start the season and nothing happens. You know, it could be that they end up a fourth place and, you know, they don't pull off a second place. A lot of people probably thinking this is it. This is the season that they're going to, you know, win, uh, win the league, win the EPL. I don't know about that, but we do know they, they ended up second place twice in a row. Uh, so there isn't that much concern to, uh, for for Arsenal, but for Manchester United, uh, nothing's changed. Nothing's really changed. You got these two guys, and and that's about it. What about the front? What about the mi uh, the middle? Now I know, like I said, there's a lot of players that are missing. Fernandez, Dalo, what's his name? Uh, <laughs> Garnacho. Yes, I guess he he counts. Lissandra Martinez, of course. Uh, so they they are missing players. Shaw, Luke Shaw, right? They are missing their their starters. They're they're not the same team, but. I, I I don't really I don't I don't see them going that far with this with this team especially when you have Anthony like I said uh, uh, Erickson Casemiro those players are not fit for for the Premier League they just are not not fit for for Manchester United squad that are trying to achieve what are you guys trying to achieve like always oh, you're trying to win the league you're trying to get as far as you can with the uh, Champions League you're trying to win Champions League let's be honest and I don't see them doing it with the uh, with this team I really don't see it. I really don't see it and not, not because again and Jaden Sancho oh my god Jaden Sancho came in and that's the best I've ever seen of Jaden Sancho wearing donning a Manchester United kit that's the best I've seen I, of course he played much better when he was at Borussia I'm talking about in Manchester United that's the best I've seen him he came in he was a little bit lost he wasn't uh, really receiving the ball he wasn't making any contact with the ball ended up switching with the guy and going to the right right hand side and the first two three touches did pretty well influenced the game and then not much else happened, right? And I think there's talks of him leaving. I don't think he's going to be part of the Ten Hag setup system, uh, part of his plans. I don't see why he wouldn't be able to, to play, except because nothing's going to change. You know, it's going to be more of the same. The, the team's pretty much the same. Why would you expect him to play better? But then again, why would he go to PSG and start playing better? Because he seems to thrive when he's playing outside, right? Anywhere but England, he, he's going to do really well. So there's that, but I mean, he did look good and I wish he could stay. Now that I think about it, like I kind of changed my mind because at one point I was thinking, yeah, he needs to leave because again, he was just a completely different player. Rashford, another one, just more of the same. I think that 20, what was it, 22, 23 season, I think that was the best that he's going to have in his whole career. 
So I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know, man. It's it's not looking good for Manchester United, and I don't think it is Ten Hag, and not because I like Ten Hag. Yeah, he seems like a sweet, caring man. No, it's not that. It's because I don't see anyone except Pep Guardiola coming in and changing this Manchester United squad. Nobody else can do that. I don't think it's the lack of new coach. I don't think it's uh, switching up a new coach. You guys have had such horrible seasons. If I, I can't think of another team that's had crappy uh, times with coaches uh, the last, what, seven, eight years. Um, so I don't think that's that's the answer. I think it's a complete U-Haul of all these players that I mentioned. And maybe more also. Maybe more. Maybe more so. It's it's worrying. I don't know. It's worrying. If I was a Manchester United fan, I'd be I'd be concerned. But anyways, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it. The game, like I said, it was kind of a sleeper. It had its moments where it was exciting because these games can get exciting. I remember last season, uh, Real Madrid versus Barcelona. Man, that they they were playing the El Clasico. They were definitely playing for something. And I remember back in the day, this was more entertaining than El Clasico. In the 2000s, the, these were the matches I would uh, I would I, w I wouldn't miss. Manchester United versus Arsenal, I could not conceive of the idea of missing this match. A classic, I could miss it because some of those games are disappointed. Now, I'm I'm interested. I actually can't wait for, for Real Madrid to play. I want to see the whole Mbappe, Vinicius, Bellingham, Rodrigo, maybe. There's talks of him leaving. I want to see that whole thing going on. So this game, you know, it was fun. It was good. It had its uh, moments where they were making a lot of mistakes. They were giving the ball away. Um, you know, there were some good saves. There were some good opportunities. Not that many chances. Uh, maybe in the second half, a couple. And, the, and the, the, at the beginning of the first half, there were a lot more, obviously. As always, thank you so much for watching. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Tschüss.